James, you're never estranged from a great story. So yeah. what was it that attracted you to this when you read it? Well, it was it was uh, it was a terrific script. I loved I loved the, the the characters in it. You know, because they're all they're not what you see. You know, at the beginning of the movie, and it it progresses and it twists and changes. And it's just a, it, it, you know, it's not a horror movie, it's a psychological thriller, I would think, more than anything. But as always, you know, it's the script and the part that, that seduce you, you know. And I was, I was very happy to come and do it with Adam, who's, who was fantastic as a director, you know. I'm thinking as well as an actor, you're always looking for different roles and, and, and to, to explore. And, yes. and what was it about this particular part that you hadn't explored before? Uh, I think um, uh, uh, trying to get into the head of someone who is a, uh, a complete psychopath, you know? That's a very interesting journey, you know? And as an actor, you try and find those, those feelings within yourself, you know? It's not, it's not an external medium, you know? You, you, you find it in you, and, and, and so that's, that's always... It, it might not be pleasant, but it's, it's, it's the most interesting sort of things you can do, you know? And I'm presuming as well that you can't make a judgment call on your character, on whether he's good or bad. You really have to look for a backstory to think, well, why is this man the way he is? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. If, you, if Even if the backstory isn't in any way portrayed, it's still got to be there. You know, you've still got to see where he came to when we joined the movie, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, always fascinating to try and build up that, that backstory. With the career that you've had, you've worked on big budget films to independent films. What is it about working with an independent that's so important to you and why you feel like you want to support it? I feel much more comfortable uh, working on independent films. I, 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 you know, I've done sort of like, you know, big budget movies and things. But you know, very often you, f you, you feel a cog in a machine. You know, whereas working with, with new directors and, and uh, young actors, it, it reinvigorates me because of their excitement and enjoyment and enthusiasm for the project. You know, it's, it's not about the bottom line. It's not about how much money you can make. You know, filmmaking is not about that. You know, it's about entertaining people and informing people. And if, if we forget that that's where the fresh blood comes from, the film industry is in a lot of problems. So we've got to support independent filmmakers, you know. Even if the budget is 10,000, 20,000, it doesn't matter. We've got to support them, and that's what's great about Fright Fest, that they let people have their films shown. What was it about this story that first attracted you to, to want a helmet? So I think the tone of the film is like right down the line of like what I was looking to do for my first film as a, as a director. I had previously worked with a lot of the people involved in this as a cinematographer like on City Rats and other short form projects. And uh, when Simon let me read this, it jumped out at me because it's got that sort of slow simmer that's under the surface. It's sort of uneasy. It's not like in your face horror. It's more like this psychological thriller that twists into a darker horror towards the end of the film. An interesting experience for you then, as, as this is your first time working with the actors and and kind of bringing the performances out in them. Yeah, I mean, I was very lucky to have the cast that I had on a film on my first film. So you know, I had people like James Cosmo and like James Lance and Eileen and Nora Jane Noon and Amy. They're all like people with a lot of experience, like both in TV and in film. And so. I just listened a lot, like I tried not to tell people what to do. I feel like when you have a strong script and you have a strong cast and you have a good crew, it makes my job kind of easy and I just waited to see what they would bring and in some cases we had to workshop stuff a bit, but for the most part it worked out really well. And also you're filming in the one location and the, the, or the cast and the crew are staying there, so how did that help, do you think, inform your, your actors into their performance? Um, yeah, absolutely. It was it was great because we actually, for a low budget, it was quite unique that we had a week of rehearsals before, like on location, in situ, where we'd be shooting. And it was this quite remote um, location, like in the middle of nowhere. So we were all very isolated and it gave us a chance to like get into the story. We did, you know, the first day we did read-throughs and then we sort of like, I, I went, kind of unorthodox, I think, but we went around and looked at all the spaces that the story would exist in all the locations because they were all right there. There was uh, the manor house that you see in the film, but then they had this derelict castle. It was sort of like a fake castle that was built at the turn of the century, I think. So it's not like an old, old castle, but it was like falling into disrepair. And, um, and so we were able to treat that like a studio, paint, tear things down, do whatever we wanted. 
And so it was just a great experience, like being out there with everyone. And James was saying that this has been, it was four years ago when you shot it. So has it been, has it been difficult, for, not necessarily to keep momentum for the film, but um, how come it's taken you, I suppose, so long? Uh, well, it's kind of good news in some ways because we had some, uh, we shot it over here and, you know, it's a UK film, but we got interest from some US producers like Steven Schneider, who works at, uh, with Paramount a lot, like did all the Paranormal Activity movies and The Devil Inside and all that. So he came on as executive producer and the process was, you know, we had a great film, but to make it more palatable to a wider audience of like horror fans, especially in the States, we, they wanted to rework some of the stuff and like sort of raise the stakes in terms of jump scares and like, and also just like clarify the story because sometimes, you know, English films that are maybe, maybe a little bit more like independent, uh, can be not not as easy to digest so we kind of like went through that process but I was always fighting to keep it as true to what we originally had as possible and I think we came to like a good compromise yeah